Isn't this one of the easiest fun activities you have done? Just add an iodine solution to the food item where the starch is hiding and the culprit is caught. You can try various experiments and variations with this. Why don't you try it on a few more items in the kitchen? For example, turmeric or the health drink powder like Horlicks or even garam masala. What about trying it on milk, syrup, medicine or any food item your parents give that you don't want to eat? At least you can have some fun with it instead of throwing it out, can't you? The video shows that it is tried on food items alone, but don't be misled by it. Try it on anything that is at your home. How about glue that is present in your study table? What about kumkum in your puja room? Toothpaste or soap or shampoo in your bathroom? Or on the chalk piece when your teacher isn't looking? This fun activity has allowed us to ask many questions. The most obvious question is, why do certain food items change color to deep blue when we add iodine solution to it? When iodine is added to certain food items that contain starch, iodine turns deep blue. But when the food item doesn't contain starch, iodine doesn't change its color. What is starch? Essentially, starch is nothing but glucose. Yes, it is the same thing that comes in your Glucon D packet. However, plants produce glucose using sunlight, water and carbon dioxide. Glucose is food for plants. They break down glucose to release energy. This energy is used by plants to do its work, that is respiration, and grow, which is building cell walls and so on. But why is glucose stored as starch? Well, glucose can easily dissolve in water. So it is easy for plants and us to consume glucose and release energy. But it is difficult for plants to store them in their body to use them later. So plants have to come up with a cunning way of changing the form of glucose into another form which doesn't dissolve in water. That form is called starch. Aren't plants smart? What is iodine? Iodine is an element and is part of the periodic table. But in this test, it is not the iodine element that we use. We use potassium iodide solution. Why? This is because iodine cannot be dissolved easily in water. Therefore, an iodine reagent is made by dissolving iodine in water in the presence of potassium iodide. This makes a linear triiodide iron complex, which is I3-, which can be dissolved in water, as shown in the picture below. Starch can be separated into two fractions, amylose and amylopectin. Natural starches are mixtures of amylose, about 10 to 20 percent, and amylopectin, about 80 to 90 percent. Amylose forms a colloidal dispersion, which is soluble in hot water, whereas amylopectin is completely insoluble. When we add potassium iodide to food items that contain starch, the iodine molecule slips inside of the amylose coil. This gives the deep blue color. Similar experiments are frequently done by scientists in many fields of work. One such interesting field is called forensic science, where scientists do similar experiments to look for a particular substance in a crime scene to know how a crime was committed. Here is a real-life story that developed the field of forensic science. James Marsh was the first to apply this new science to the art of forensics. He was called by the prosecution in a murder trial to give evidence as a chemist in 1832. The defendant, John Bodle, was accused of poisoning his grandfather with arsenic-laced coffee. Marsh performed the standard test by mixing a suspected sample with hydrogen sulfide and hydrochloric acid. When he was able to detect arsenic as yellow arsenic trisulfide, it was shown to the jury, but it had already deteriorated by then allowing the suspect to be acquitted due to reasonable doubt. Annoyed by that, Marsh developed a much better test. He combined a sample containing arsenic with sulfuric acid and arsenic-free zinc, resulting in arsen gas. The gas was ignited and it decomposed to pure metallic arsenic, which when passed to a cold surface would appear as a silvery black deposit. So sensitive was the test, known formally as the Marsh test, 
that it could detect as little as one fiftieth of a milligram of arsenic. He first described this test in the Edinburgh Philosophical Journal in 1836. This was just a story and these are the tests that we do in various disciplines of science to get a color test to prove the presence of a chemical or absence of it. Starch is of course an essential food item. Plants produce and use it but leave most of it for others to consume, that is animals like us. Our digestive system with a plethora of microbes and enzymes is able to break down starch again to simpler sugars that then power our bodies in every which way. You could perhaps think of starch as the most vital food item required by organisms, especially humans, to live. Think about all our staple food, rice, wheat, corn, barley, ragi, joar or bajra. Every single cereal grain or millet is primarily a source of starch. It is hard to fathom the importance starch plays in our life. It is vital in every sense and one of the wonders of life and our living planet. Some scientific terms. Solution. In chemistry, a solution is a homogeneous mixture composed of two or more substances. In such a mixture, a solute is a substance dissolved in another substance known as a solvent. A reagent is a substance added to cause a chemical reaction or to test if a chemical reaction occurs. A chemical element is a species of atoms having the same number of protons in their atomic nuclei, that is the same atomic number. The periodic table is a tabular arrangement of the chemical elements ordered by their atomic number, electron configurations and recurring chemical properties. This ordering shows periodic trends such as elements with similar behavior in the same column. A molecule is an electrically neutral group of two or more atoms held together by chemical bonds. Some applications of starch. Starch is extensively used in the food making industry. For example, it is used for making syrups, jellies and soup. It is also used in paper making industries. It improves smoothness, hardness, whiteness and gloss of paper. It is used in washing clothes to make clothes stiff. Hopefully you have enjoyed conducting this activity and this video and got to learn something about starch and how to test for it. For the experiment we can also learn some general lessons. For example, if we have a complex question, does this item have starch, we can find the answer to it by 1. Asking simpler but related questions, for example, which substance changes its behavior when added to starch and 2. Designing an experiment to answer the question. We hope you will take this approach to think about all the things you experiment with and see around you. Meanwhile, marvel at the wonder of nature to have created, through evolution, a complex carbohydrate like starch, which is a vital nutrient to all life on Earth. Thank you. Mm -hmm.